Just a second. All right, so now we are recording the session and thank you so much for coming through. My name is Kukule Tuklava, your host. And uh, I am still going to be expecting some people to join us as we progress, but we are not going to wait in the interest of time seeing that we only have an hour for this meeting. So um, firstly, just to highlight a few uh, issues before we bring our speaker. Uh, I'm just showing my face. I'm gonna be hiding it for the sake of the network so that you know you are not talking to the robot. I know some of you would like to to see that you are not talking to a robot. Yeah, that's me. So I'm going to make sure that I stop the video to improve the quality of my uh, engagement. We are or already having our guests in line, who is Mr. Pagami Lematonzela. I just want to, before I introduce him properly, thank you all for coming through and thank him as well for uh, reaching out to us and ensuring that he's ever so ready to present uh, this very important uh, uh, sort of like presentation today. I must mention that, uh, you know, we are on Radio Onukozi FM, Ngamandla Omnoto, Lapeses Kulumekwanagakulu, about issues of economic development, entrepreneurship generally as well encouraging people to participate meaningfully in the economy and encouraging people to ensure that they understand as well what the economic landscape has to offer. And therefore, being entrepreneurs, how do they need to position themselves accordingly? We are living in very interesting times in South Africa. You know as much as I do that lately, we're sitting with a real ticking time bomb when it comes to issues of unemployment, where we're sitting with over 15 million people unemployed. And the situation of COVID-19 has not made it any easier, uh, having lost so many jobs in the economy. But we know we are tracking very slowly to recover from COVID-19, even though we know COVID-19 is still upon us. But I think it's very crucial, having said that, uh, to further emphasize the importance of us working together, as you all understand our entrepreneurship work, Kumanda Omnoto, and the system that we are using to ensure we bring those who are entrepreneurial into the system to assist First of all, in creating wealth for themselves. And secondly, in raising really levels of employment and curbing the unemployment levels that we have. And entrepreneurship for me is one very key factor in our economy in a sense that without entrepreneurship, I really believe that we are doomed and without entrepreneurs therefore, because entrepreneurship therefore becomes a function of an entrepreneur. Somebody prepared to take risks, somebody prepared to launch out into the deep end, but somebody at the same time having all the support mechanisms that will ensure that they succeed. Because we all know that entrepreneurship is very challenging. It's not a child's play to go out there and leave your salary and say, I want to start a business. So today, without any further ado, I want to uh, mention that we are having this Women Empowerment Fund, which we have heard about, we have seen on the media, different forms of media, especially your social media, and being announced that is coming is here by one of our developmental funding agency or institution, the National Empowerment Fund. And as a result, we thought let's invite only women. I know we may have a few men among us, sure. hoping that they represent their wives, their sisters, and their, uh, their, their cousins and their, their daughters. Sure. 
So we are saying, let us then have a discussion with Mr. Matonzela. He is a regional manager, uh, one very senior member of the National Empowerment Fund responsible for the whole of KwaZulu-Natal, even though the platform of Amanda Umnoto is nationwide. So Mr. Matonzela, I would want to give it over yeah, to you, sir. And he's a known person among us and a, a brother and a friend that I've known for many years who's always helpful and willing to assist when it comes to explaining the nitty gritties of how the processes of NEF works. I've known him from whence he was still with Itala. And uh, Mr. Matonzela, you will take us through, sir, anything that you wanna say as a precursor to your presentation, you're most welcome. Just take us through how this whole women uh, empowerment fund is going to be playing itself out. You can unmute yourself and then. Good morning, good morning, and I also like to greet all the ladies in the house, uh, and I'm glad that you were able to join us today to be able to find out about the Women Empowerment Fund that uh, Unundaba talks about. Uh, you will find out as part of the presentation that the Women Empowerment Fund is not new. Uh, we have had the Women Empowerment Fund for a couple of years within the National Empowerment Fund. And we are having this presentation today to be able to encourage uh, women out there, women entrepreneurs who are already in business and those who are uh, looking to be able to get into business, to be able to approach the National Empowerment Fund so that we can see more women taking up the stand up front and to be able to um, ensure that they're in their rightful place in the economy. So without much further ado, um, I'll just get into the presentation. And for those who may not be familiar with the NEF, I will just, just give you a brief on what the NEF is about and how do we go about doing our business. Uh, I'm not sure what, why my screen is not moving at the moment. Um, Pardon me. There we go. So first of all, let me just uh, remind uh, people who may know a little bit of the, about the National Empowerment Fund or those who may not to be able to know who we are, what we do. So the National Empowerment Fund is a government agency under the Department of Trade and Industry and Competition that has been in existence since the uh, Act of Parliament in 1998. Uh, we started funding in 2005 officially with the budget that was given to us by National Treasury uh, through the Department of Trade and Industry then of 2.4 billion rand. The National Empowerment Fund has been put together uh, in order to be able to be a driver and a thought leader to facilitate black economic participation through the provision of financial and non-financial support as well as to be able to ensure that we promote a culture of savings and investment. We are an agency empowered to be able to drive BE, a triple BE in the economy. And that is essentially what we try to do in our day-to-day -day in terms of what we do, what, what, uh, in terms of our operations. So our mandate is split into two, as you could see, in terms of financial and non-financial support, as well as a culture of savings and investment. Today, I will not dwell into much in terms of culture and savings. I'll dwell into the funding aspect, which I believe is of interest to our audience today. So as a precursor, one would want to be able to highlight that the National Empowerment Fund generally funds between 250,000 grants to 75 million rands in terms of loan funding. This is towards startups, expansion finance, procurement, as well as equity acquisition. So generally in terms of the number of funds that the National Empowerment Fund looks after, 
uh, we have five specialty funds and we, through those funds, are able to assist black entrepreneurs to be able to access funding between 250,000 rands to 75 million. We fund across the business cycle from startups, as I've said, to preferential procurement, all the way to mature type of businesses. And we do this in order to achieve our mandate of being able to ensure empowerment dividend through broad-based black economic empowerment, the ownership management and control and employment equity of black people. Black women empowerment has always been um, one of the factors that we drive in the economy and we have never stopped wanting to be able to see black women up front. We want to be able to achieve job, job creation, growth, uh, ensure the growth of certain sectors in the, our economy and ensure that financial support is across the board. I'm not sure. Uh, all right. So in terms of our funding projects you, uh, and services, you'll see that we've got a spread from the 250,000 that I spoke about through the, uh, through the 75 million. And we do women empowerment throughout these products. And we have been pursuing this ever since we started operating. But after a period of time, the National Empowerment Fund decided to be able to then have a specific fund that will drive women participation as we were seeing that this was falling behind. The types of instruments that we are able to fund you through are through various uh, funding uh, instruments like bridging finance, term loans, credit facilities and the like as you can be able to read on the screen. The element in which we are trying to be able to deal with in the market are what we call market failures that face black business in South Africa uh, in terms of being able to get in, in, involved in terms of the economy. This we have identified from the element of limited own capital, uh, the issue of limited management skills, access to affordable capital that seems to be a problem for black businesses to be able to access. We want to be able to ensure that people are able to put together quality business plans so that they can access the mark, uh, access money. And we want to ensure that they also have better bargaining power in terms of dealing with competition out in the market, as well as to access local and international markets. In terms of sectors that we fund, we fund across the board. Many of the sectors, perhaps one would see on the screen on the different sectors that we fund, except certain exclusions that you, I will talk about shortly in terms of what we will not fund uh, in terms of what we have been given in terms of the mandate. So as I said, in terms of uh, Women Empowerment Fund, which I believe most of you are here to listen to, we have been driving this for quite some time now uh, with the fund of a Women Empowerment Fund falling as one of the key funds that we want to ensure that women are able to get access to finance and for us to be able to grow the gender divide so that we can see more women in the market. Uh, we have been doing this uh, because of the fact that we want to be able to celebrate women. We believe that their gift to motherhood, we believe that they are capable and they are able to get to the forefront of what the NEF wants to achieve in terms of transforming the economy. So first and foremost, let me get into the Women Empowerment Fund. So our fund offering in terms of Women Empowerment Fund is to be able to fund black women businesses that are either startups, involved in expansions, acquisitions, and who are looking for either machinery, equipment, working capital, uh, we're able to provide those and any preferential, uh, and we provide this through preferential loans that we are able to afford to women so that they can be able to get money in terms of, um, uh, get money at a cheaper rate so that they can be able to have that shoulder up to get into the economy. 
Now, under the funding terms, I have uh, written that to be announced soon because I have been cautioned by uh, our head office that this, there's a new empowerment fund for women that is going to be launched fairly soon and through protocol, uh, they want to be able to announce it properly through the press, through the, the, the structures. But uh, what I can say to you, there's an exciting um, funding terms that are coming through uh, over and above what we have been doing in the past. But the exciting ones that will be announced, I think very soon, probably uh, before the end of this week. So you will pardon me for not being able to talk to those at the moment because uh, protocol has requested that I should not be able to talk to these until the DTIC and the National Empowerment Fund are able to launch them formally. But just to be able to talk about what we're looking for in terms of criteria. We are looking for black women who have a registered legal entity, are in good financials, a taxpayer in good standing. They're involved in primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors of the economy. And exclusions are those that are involved in alcohol, tobacco, and ammunition-related services. Those are the ones that we will not fund, but we will fund across the board. We specifically want to be able to see majority-owned women enterprises, at least 51% and above. Preferably, we would want to be able to see that uh, the women are actually 100% and they are controlling and managing these businesses and driving them not only in terms of board level, but we want to be able to see them, them driving it at a managerial level. The, com the issue of commercial viability of the business is key to us, so there must be a, a good vi uh, viable business case and sustainable business case that is there. It must comply to all relevant laws and regulations of South Africa. We want them to be able to demonstrate an ability to be able to pay to the National Empowerment Fund, and they must be creating work, new jobs, or sustaining jobs that are already in place. We are directing our Women Empowerment Fund across the board, but specifically, we want to be able to see how we can empower the businesses that are in rural and township areas and in other previously disadvantaged or depressed areas. Those is where our focus area is in terms of being able to deploy this Women Empowerment Fund. And where possible, we will co-fund with other private or public sector institutions uh, on the larger projects that may be there. And uh, we look to be able, there's a lot of property transactions that we're looking to be able to get involved in, but we ensure that if ever we're dealing with property transactions, we'd want that amount of money that we utilize the procurement spend must be at least 51% allocated to majority black owned businesses. And I've st spoken about the viability and the business case thereof. In terms of the documents that we're looking for, it's the general documents. There's nothing different from others except to highlight, and I'm not going to go through this whole list, but to highlight the fact that the business case is an important element. We want to fund businesses that are women empowered, but we want to fund viable and sustainable businesses, not just businesses that because it's women driven and then they fail down the line. So we want to actually grow this woman participation and ensure that those businesses, when we talk about them in two, three years time, they are there, they are sustainable and are making uh, good money for the women that are driving them the workers that are working in them, various stakeholders, and that they are able to be able to fund those businesses. So a business plan is critical for us, for us to be able to assess that viability and sustainability. And that's the key element in what we're looking for. The other uh, uh, requirements as listed there, the key ones would be the issue of compliance. And if it's an existing business, and I've split it here between existing and startup businesses, where it's an existing businesses, we would want to be able to see previous performance through financial, uh, uh, financial uh, audited, uh, not audited financials, financials that are presented by the business at least three years 
before and if the business hasn't been in existence for three years though it, since it is has been in existence so just to illustrate as i said that the national empowerment fund has been driving women empowerment for some time now and uh, we these are the type of businesses that we have funded into women so far and you can see the split between the different sectors and um, you see the energy which is normally your petrol stations is one of the leading ones that we've been funding so long we're funded in the manufacturing and we're funded in construction i highlight this to be able to say that there is no limit that we'd want to be able to see women getting involved in we are funding them across the board we are seeing a lot of participation and we'd want to be able to say that we'd like to see these different sectors and new sectors coming on board in terms of women instead of just being able to have a a a, a, a what you call it a, a scenario whereby you know that women normally get into these type of business you know that people typically then think that they should be getting into things like catering and the like. We are saying there is no limit. We want to be able to see women getting involved in various other businesses. I have highlighted a couple of businesses so that to be able to stay your appetite, to be able to show which businesses we have funded and where women are already involved in the type of businesses uh, uh, funded by the National Empowerment Fund. And maybe where you are, you were thinking in terms of this type of business to be able to pursue. Uh, we'd like to be able to encourage you further by being able to highlight those success, uh, success stories where we have funded women. So the first one is uh, the engine garage towards Guamashu of the Queen Nandi Drive, which we have funded to uh, Ms. Dandogazi Keswa for 4.8 million rand. She has been involved in the business for uh, about three, four years now. She employs more than 62 employees and she's in the energy sector and she's making a mark for herself. She's brilliant in terms of what she's doing and she's been able to do. You will see that there has been a lot of women uh, coming into the petroleum industry in terms of the examples that I will show. And we'd like to see more of these going to the engines, the shells, the sussels uh, in terms of what we are funding. And we'd like to really encourage them to be able to get involved there. We have recently funded a, a woman owned business down uh, at Umkababa, the Shell Atra City coming into Durban, which is uh, 51% owned by a woman and 49% owned by a black uh, entrepreneur. It's a 100% black business. And it, they have taken over a business that was 25 years under ownership of a white retailer. Uh, we have, they've taken over from the 1st of February this year. And uh, so far, the performance is very high and we're seeing a lot of uh, roads. So there is no limit again to say you must start with a small petrol station. We want to be able to say here is a woman who has been able to drive this business, who has been able to get involved and get funded by the National Empowerment Fund and is running one of the Shell Atra cities, one of the six Shell Atra cities in KZN. And we'd like to be able to see more of these as we progress. We have Umama Urubi out in uh, Ladysmith, who has started a boutique hotel, a very fine, beautiful boutique hotel, where we have funded a 6.3 million rand. She had already started the business and wanted us to be able to assist her to get it operationalized. And again, this is a, a jewel in the crown in terms of our tourism type of projects that were funded in KZN. And we'd like to be able, again, to be able to see those. We know that tourism has had um, you know, the COVID-19 impact on, on it heavily, but uh, we believe that that will turn and we'd like to be able to see more black women getting involved in terms of uh, hotels. And this is one such example in the outskirts, not in the towns, in the main towns or the metros, but out in Ladysmith. And she's doing fantastically well in terms of these. Uh, we've also got those who want to get involved in clothing and, uh, and textiles a business out in Ladysmith, which we funded 12.2 million rands, 
which is owned by, by black women. And we have 30% shareholding owned by the staff who are also black women who own this business uh, besides being just workers. And again, we'd like to be able to see a lot of businesses getting involved in the clothing and textiles. These are the type of businesses that create jobs that we are able to see high levels of high of impact in the community to be able to create jobs for other women because as you drive these businesses we'd like to be able to see you creating jobs for other women so that they can also be able to come up in the economy and to be able to have that impact there are other examples which i'll go quickly through and i'll not go and think this is a shell garage again in umsinga which is a woman-owned business that received 14.5 women 14.5 million. We have recently funded a young lady out in uh, Mapumolo near Stenga to be able to get into hydroponics farming. This is the new way of farming. Uh, for those who are involved in the agricultural sector, we encourage you to be able to look at this type of farming, which is a controlled environment and has quite a, a good impact. Uh, she has uh, uh, been funded 3.5 million rands. She she started off in Mapumolo and she now has four sites in Dwe Dwe, in Palito, in um, Verulam, as well as the one, the original one in Mapumolo. She's a 29 year old and we'd like to be able to see more of these also products. So I'm showing you an array of projects, not just one sector but to be able to see that there are women getting involved in businesses. And these are recent projects. These are not as wild projects, but these are recent projects that the NEF has looked at, has been able to drive women empowerment fund, a woman empowerment through our Women Empowerment Fund. And we'd like to be able to see more of these projects coming through. The others I would highlight are the ones getting involved in um, products that were related to COVID-19. VK was one such uh, business that was producing masks. We have a private school out in Josini, 100% owned by a black woman who uh, started off as a teacher and then has developed herself to become an entrepreneur in the education sector and was funded 50 million by the National Empowerment Fund to be able to start her own private school and she's doing very well. The school has been running for three years at the moment. As I said, we have a number in terms of uh, uh, the, the service stations. This one is out in um, uh, Mbangani. We have ones involved in terms of sanitizers. We have others that are doing cocoa butter and other uh, household and hygiene products. Uh, as I said, we've got ones that are doing um, things in the health sector, uh, as well as those who are involved in the construction sector. This is Wisdom Consultants that was given 9.8 million rands. Uh, we have a lady who started off her uniform manufacturing company. She was given 10 million rands by the National Empowerment Fund. These are ones that in KwaZulu Natal, we'd like to be able to see more of, as we know that most uniforms in Guazul Natal are bought from one company that I will not mention, located down in Durban. Uh, but we see that there's a need in the outskirts, in the areas like Tugela Ferry, like in Mkanyagote and the like, where we'd like to be able to encourage women to look at getting into these businesses so that we do not have a monopoly in the market in terms of uniforms, but it is spread out quite a bit. Uh, others are getting involved in construction. Moteo Construction is a business that we funded 62 million, uh, which is a 100% black woman owned business. There are others that have got involved in terms of eye care. This is a optometrist, uh, a law firm, which is 100% black woman owned again. Those that are involved in movies, uh, in the creative arts, these are businesses that we'd like to be able to see and we have funded uh, to, to date. Um, this business is involved uh, more in terms of uh, dealing with uh, uh, construction. They deal with con uh, concrete uh, uh, type of products. Uh, we've got businesses that are involved in the culinary and pastry type of 
industry, they have schools. This is one that has been funded to 2.2 million rand. Those that are involved in terms of uh, supply to the mines in terms of uh, suppression systems and the like. Uh, in agriculture, again, cutting a ginning plant that was funded 7.3 million rand out in Mpumalanga. Uh, we've got others in construction and hardware, wholesale suppliers, condom manufacturers, um, social housing and student accommodation. We know that this is quite a popular industry that a lot of people are looking to be able to get into student accommodation. Uh, we are funding in the space, in the property space, uh, whether it's student accommodation, whether it's tourism, we'd like to be able to see more women participation in this. This is such uh, a, an example, which was given 27 million rands to be able to have a social housing and a student accommodation facility. Uh, ones involved in, in, in manufacture of raised sleepers, and those involved in the food, uh, fast food market, like steers and fish, uh, fisherways would like to be able to see. So you can see these are an array of businesses that the National Empowerment Fund has funded women businesses. And we'd like to be able to encourage more of these. And we, we are seeing not enough applications coming through. With this new fund that may will be announced soon uh, through uh, our principles, we you will be seeing some concessionary and preferential rates that are being given to women, concessionary and preferential periods before you start paying. And we'd like to be able to encourage the women here and those listening uh, to be able to say, we are committed to driving Women Empowerment Fund in South Africa. And we'd like to be able to uh, start getting your applications, your business plans coming through. Uh, you can come through to, you can call us on 031-301-1960 or come to our offices, which are located in the Kingsmead Office Park in Guazul Natal uh, through the Green Road Bank building. That's where we are located on the fourth floor or you can send emails to manamela.d at nefcop.co.za or be able to check out our website where you can get more information as well as get other services that we can be able to assist you with in terms of a business planner tool that we have there to be able to assist you to be able to put together a business uh, plan where you can bring to the National Empowerment Fund or go elsewhere. If you are not located in KZN, we have offices across South Africa uh, in all the different provinces. In Gauteng, Eastern Cape, Free State, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Northern Cape, Northwest and Western Cape, we are represented. We have offices and the details of the numbers are listed on the screen there so that you can be able to contact them and be able to get assistance. So it's not only in KZN, I may be looking after KZN, but we would like to encourage the listenership of Ubabek uh, to be able to say, please approach the different offices at the different uh, provinces so that you can get more information and get more assistance. And as we release the information of this new Women Empowerment Fund that will be announced em eminently, we'd like to be able for, to see those applications coming through. That in a nutshell, uh, Nondaba, is what I would have wanted to be able to present, and I would like to be able to take questions on that. Babolunye, thank you so much, my brother, for a very good and concise presentation. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people would like to have some questions. Uh, I've seen a lot of businesses, I wasn't even aware that some of these businesses you funded. This is very encouraging, I must say. Uh, Umamu Ruby, I know my sisters are here, Usabelo, uh, had the baby shower there. And so that's where I saw that boutique hotel. Very, very beautiful hotel and uh, very impressive. So I've sat there a few times uh, already doing my work whilst I was in Lady Smith. And quite a few businesses, uh, uh, filling stations that you've already highlight, highlighted. 
Yeah, I don't want to sort of uh, bore you with my remarks. Let me open up for questions uh, so that those that may want to know more from what Mr. Madonzela has said, uh, please be free uh, to talk to us. I see the hand that is raised from Nosimi Law. Nosimi Law would want you to unmute yourself and then have something to say. I will be going through some commentaries as well. Nosimi Law. Uh, unmute yourself, Nosimi Law. I see your hand, unless you were. Uh, uh, presentation. Yes, I don't know whether it's my site where the, there's a, your, your, your line is cracking a no. bit, but I can hear you. Go ahead. And alcohol, I find alcohol tobacco. So is there any option for me? Uh, I don't know, Nanda, but should I answer the questions as they come or should I take a couple before I respond? I, 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 I think let us take three questions at a time. Thank you so much. Uh, Three questions at a time. Uh, thanks, Nosimilo. Let's get another question. Noguzola, um, you can unmute yourself, Sisi. Uh, okay, I've done it. Can, can you hear me now? Hello? I can hear you loud and clear, yes. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for this informative uh, discussion that we just had from uh, Omar. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, if I want, I'm not sure whether I, I, I missed it, but if I really need a help in terms of making a business plan for hospitality, because that's where my interest is, uh, do I need to go to people independent or you guys also help? in a way. Okay, thank you so much, uh, CC. Let's take one Thanks. more last, and then we'll give Mr. Matonzela to answer and go back to another uh, omnibus of questions. Let me start with you, Sis Tuli. Uh, San Bonan. Uh, because me am interested in the Um student, student accommodation. But now, instead of us good, and now, mong and now, mong and I land, ungena, ungena building. But by was in Ukala pants, in Oma Fanel and Sambe, Uben a land, or Uben a building, Velesimile, or Bimbuza Logoti. Okay, no go in your foot to good, and now Fanel Uben a Mali, no goose a good Sambe. If five per cent, Yalo Mali, Loifuna, your nomi ten per cent is in this jar. Okay, thanks, Mr. Tuli. Mama Tonzela. May you please take the three questions, yeah. Thank, thank you, Nanda, but thank you very much for that. Uh, the first question with relating to uh, wine and alcohol. So, so unfortunately, our mandate, uh, and this is uh, borrowed from the Department of Trade and Industry, that is our parent ministry, uh, restricts us from being able to get involved in what we call thin industry. We are unable to fund you if you are getting involved in terms of alcohol, gambling, tobacco, brothels. We are not able to get involved in terms of that. Uh, we would get involved in terms of a business that is not necessarily the core, it's wine or alcohol. Say for instance, a spare, which is, is generally food, but they also sell alcohol or a hotel that may be there, but then they also sell alcohol that we can be able to do if ever it's not the core function of what the business is. But our restrictions, according to a mandate, unfortunately, we are unable to assist you in terms of those sectors. Uh, we would encourage you to possibly 
then get assistance from our sister institutions, such as uh, Bo Itala, Bo Sifa, who may be able to consider your application in those. But for us, unfortunately, strictly, we cannot be able to touch those. In terms of e, e business plan for hospitality, Sisnog Zone, uh, on our website, if you go into our website, www.nefcorp.co.za, you are able to get under tools what we call a business planning tool. So what happens in that business planning, it's an interactive uh, module where you it asks you questions, you fill out information, it asks you questions until such a time that you complete your business plan. If you haven't uh, completed the question, you can be able to save and come back to it later. And it eventually when you complete the whole exercise, it is able to develop a business plan that you can print to bring to the National Empowerment Fund or to any other financial institution. We are unable or do not have consultants to be able to do the, the, the business plans for you because it's a funder team. So we cannot be the player and the referee. So we cannot buy a, write your business plan and then also assess it. But we give you this tool to be able to do that. Outside of that, especially in KZN and, and, and also I think uh, 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 in other areas uh, outside of KZN, we have our sister organizations like Trade and Investment, Guazul Natal, uh, who assist you in terms of getting a consultant who will do the business plan, as well as other technical assistance that you may read, or as well as our other sister organization, ISIDA. So we also encourage you very much to get involved when the business plan is being done. Do not get involved, do not just get a business plan written by somebody and then be able to present it because Tennessee assess awareness in your understanding of your business. So we assume, assume that you have been taking part in the compilation of the business plan. So many of our, our, our entrepreneurs are writing their own business plans and coming through to us or utilizing the tool. And we'd like to encourage you to, snob, sort of, to also look at that. In terms of uh, uh, student accommodation, says Tuli, um, in student accommodation, generally we would fund uh, businesses that are, in, if you want to get into student accommodation, if you want to build the student accommodation facility, we would fund you to be able to build it so long as you have achieved development rights. In other words, you've got approved municipality uh, plans, you've been able to get the different other regulatory issues like EIA and everything done, we would be able to assist you to be able to build the student accommodation uh, if you have the land. Alternatively, we will fund you to be able to buy an existing business, uh, uh, existing buildings, sorry, that you would want to, uh, uh, to convert into a student accommodation. Key to this, Sisi Etul, is the fact that I would say, you would need to have engaged this, the organization or the institution that wants to be able to place students, to be able to understand uh, their requirements in terms of Kote, what is a space allocation per student that they want, and the fact that they have students that are needing the student accommodation. We're seeing a number of people getting student accommodation, wanting a building, but they don't have the market. Everything is driven by the market. At the very least, be able to talk to the organization to know what their needs are and for them to be able to assess that building or give you guidance on what their requirements are and will be able to assist you in terms of that. Uh, the question around the issue of the land. Um, so see, if you're buying the property with a building, we'll buy the, the building and the land with you. Uh, where you are buying the land, your biggest problem that tends to, to, to face a lot of entrepreneurs, if I buy the land today at 10 million rands for you, uh, you then have a period where you are still gonna go through getting all the rights to be able to develop, which could take up to two years or more. What happens during that time? Who is paying for the business, for the loan? Because the loan has to be serviced continuously. 
So we tend to remind clients that we are, we'd like to be able to fund businesses that can be able to then eventually pay us within a short period of time, as opposed to ones that you're buying the land, but you are still, do not, are still going to go through a period of dealing with development rights, and then that becomes a, a hurdle. Over to you, Nanda. Ambolonia, thank you so much. Ngala Uktata, the last three questions, and then we close at 11. Lungile Pungula, Kalasis in Teluguti Uzi. Sis Lungile, unmute yourself. And then uh, I see Galaxy A70, so I don't know who to buy them. That's okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Very loud and clear, yes. All right. Um, firstly, my name is Lungi, and thank you very much uh, to be part of this uh, great information session. What I would like to understand is, number one, um, the, when the person comes to any F4 funding, fully-fledged entrepreneurs, meaning that you are not committed in any, for example, you are currently working, but you've got this big business plan or you've got this great idea, but you are still working. How important it is for you guys to actually have someone who's there full-time? Because I know other, other, other institutions, they will tell you that you have to be there full-time as an entrepreneur. That's my question number one. And then my question number two is, I would like to know, um, how do you guys do it in terms of safe arguments sake, I need money to buy like a, a petrol station. And then um, I know most of the time, like the banks will say, what is it that you have as a deposit or your own commitment um, based on the amount that you need? So how do you guys do yours? Is it based, is it like 10%, 5%? How does it work? Thank you so much, Sisu Lungi. Lungi Lepungula. No, with another hand. Yes, yes, sorry. Sorry, I yes. got disconnected. Um, yeah, Shupin Epic Lang in corner. Just quickly, I just want to find out. Thank you for your presentation, even though at the a cut or at the cut or somewhere. So I'm not too sure if this was covered. I'm currently in the beauty and health industry. It's been existing for the past year. Uh, however, being feasible to get totally assistance in expanding and adding a additional services within my business to grow it further. So I just wanted to find out NEF does uh, assist in funding uh, those type of business, uh, especially now that it's existing. And there are somebody else on a question. Raise your hand. Right, Kora Munyo Nambuzo. Right, uh, you guys, send us a case is Anta Sisulungi, no Sisulungi. Right, and um, I, I see there's another question on our chat box. How much should one have from their pockets in order to get funding uh, that comes from Sisula, I think, and then Sisuli Namudawung? Does the NEF fund land purchases? Oh, I think uh, Leo say covered uh, about Matonzela. We see any other. Um, thank you for the presentation from Nube. We are five ladies in a stock fell, have registered bank account. Should we then register a formal company on CIPC first before we can be funded? Uh, Matonzela, just please take note of that. Um, and the other one says, I would like to find out how much would one need to get fun to get funding in starting a petrol station. I uh, guess that's clear, but you take note. Uh, Sue says, can you please outline the common factors that makes the startup applications not to be considered? Uh, and um, You've got a handful there, but Martin said, "And the look booza, utenga ukuba ne mali na uze nisibolege imali. Uma use benzela ulumeni si aitola yini ifandi si abogakulu ngolwazi 
and is a pillar and I'm shining. Well, I was this Sunday, Matube and Tim. Yeah, I think the last one, but Matt and I'll just give this over to you. Is there criteria for <coughs> rural businesses to qualify? Um, uh, I, I see a few hands. And as normal, you can be able to take those or you just want to hit on these ones. Uh, let me take these and I'll take more. I'm, I'm still available to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, the, the first question that was asked was around the operational involvement. And I think it also came up later on. I think I'll deal with it with also the question around if you are a government employee, what happens? <clears throat> so uh, at the NAF, we believe very firmly on the issue that you need to have the entrepreneur being involved in the business on a full-time basis. Uh, this is from lessons learned that we have seen that where businesses are being done by people who uh, Lava Sevens are somewhere else, they tend to suffer because money gets lost, stock gets lost, and those are the key elements that get the business being driven and it falls apart. Even if you're dealing with a service a business, you find that the standards are not kept. So we, 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 are firm, we are a firm believer that if there's one uh, person applying, there's only one person applying, we want that person to be involved in the business on a full-time basis. This is a minimum requirement on our side. If there are two or more people, we want at least one of them who is a shareholder to be involved in the business. It is important for us, and as I said, through lessons learned, so falling apart because of the fact that the people who are owning the businesses are not there uh, to look after the money that we have invested, to look after the business, to look after the customers that are buying, and therefore this becomes key. It then goes with the issue, you go to if umuntu uguhulmene, uh, what happens then? Um, we do not bar umuntu or seven zagahulmene go to apply. We will consider that uh, what we, what is commonly known as a political exposed person, which will be dealt with separately by a different committee. But we will look at the deal in terms of viability and sustainability on its own merits. Singa abesese to ngobu guhulmene abesese ibuga ngekluga eleyo business le. But the thing is, if you are in government and uza uweto. We will then expect you that once we have approved the deal for you to resign and run the business. So you cannot be involved in the business. Now where to Ubuso Ubu Sebenza, whether Uga Hulman and Omu Sevenza get any business, but you are not involved in the business. If Ning two, at least one of you needs to be involved in the business. The the other question around the deposit, and thank you, Usis Tuli Nai Begai Buzi little question. I had missed it. So at the National Empowerment Fund, we understand the fact that uh, our target market, which is uh, black people in general and black Africans particularly, and well as, as Obama, don't have much capital to be able to put towards a business. So we do not have a prescriptive percentage uh, that we have, which is 2%, 10%. City, Chira now is Vivanen. Siboni a commitment, Yako Utate irisk nat. Sibona would now look bigger. And therefore, we do not have the percentage. At times, when you are dealing with a business, was what now to do as Zamaguians that we find a hundred percent, or at least let's say Ufagega Nan Ufago two percent, citizens if I get that young, Utoda would Yakamega iconic Tata E. It debt at that level. And because it cannot hold that debt at that level, we then look at the fact of say, how much debt can it take? And if the debt then is, it, 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 let's say for instance, it can take only 80%, then 20% needs to be found in terms of equity, either from the entrepreneur or an investor 
or at times the National Empowerment Fund in the larger projects will look at providing either mezzanine finance or shareholder loans or what we call equity to make sure that it's a Valaleo gap lay. So that's what we do in terms of, 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 of that uh, of situation. Let me just remember the, the other question here. I've written them down, I can't read my own handwriting. Um, there was a question around petrol stations. Uh, in terms of petrol stations, we do fund petrol stations, Wakalapansi, see our fund Afuti Guti, Umuntu Ongena into an existing petrol station, Aitenge, if you're acquiring a petrol station, or one that is a new petrol station and you're coming in as a retailer, we're able to assist you in terms of funding on those. Uh, the question I think was directed at the fact that then what happens because we then get, you get told that you need to have 30%, 20%. We will start by looking at the business to be able to say from the little money that you are able to contribute, how can we be able to fund you and structure the deal in such a way that we meet you with the little money that you are able to contribute and take risk? So we try to be able to fund it based on that. We, our structuring will take in consideration, it's cut in moratorium, will take into consideration the, the, the periods of repayment so that it makes it manageable. So that Utolo would say, even if back to 40%, we are able to fund the business without you putting in that 40%. There are some franchises whereby Utolo would say, they insist on that percentage. And even when we structure it, without that that 40 percent then we will let you know but rest assured we work very closely with you and that petrol that oil company or that franchisee to be able to bridge the gap so that we can ensure that you get into the business without needing to be able to pay in much money in terms of that uh, common factors that make a a, a business a startup business, as I, as I understood it, not to be able to then eventually get funding. Funding generally, one of the critical issues of it is driven by the fact that a person has secured a market. Yes, absolutely. You need to have a market that is willing and able and can have the means of being able to buy from you. That market can be substantiated either through contracts, which Sometimes you get, sometimes you don't. Can be substantiated through an element of you doing a research through a market feasibility study to be able to show that there is a general market that is looking for that product and you are answering to that need. Or at times you get what we call letters of intent that give us an idea of how big the market is, who wants to be able to buy, from you, reliable people who we know, would say they will be able to meet their commitment. And people who say, even within their letters of intent, once you get funding, we are willing to be able to um, uh, purchase from you. Uh, we will look at those businesses. And maybe the fourth one is if you are in the retail or supplying retail, if you are listed within retailers, both supermarket, or pick and pay, or spa, or whatever, those are the ones that you find we look at at the market because we want to substantiate the fact that the business can generate money and can be sustainable. So the market becomes a very critical issue. Uh, maybe two others that I will just mention uh, upfront is the fact that obviously we want the business to be able to show repayment ability of the loan. So if ever the business doesn't show repayment ability, then it then becomes a, a, a major factor. Uh, the, the third that I would highlight is the fact of um, the owner getting involved in the business and being committed to be able to get involved. Uh, we will not, I, I, I've, asked, I've had this question being asked, can you, if I was a teacher, fund me in a petrol station? Yes, we will. If you demonstrate the skills that you have, a business acumen, you have the will, 
and you've got the potential to be able to be successful in that business when we engage with you we will fund you even if you've never done that business before so it's not going to be rejected based on the fact that you've got a shortage of skill but market becomes a critical element and the viability to be able to show that it can repay through the different uh, financial projections become the critical issues on startup businesses for them to be able to get uh, 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 funding. And as known about what I could, or the registration of a company, yes, Mama Lo or Stock Fella, we, we fund businesses that are registered under the Companies Act or under the, the, the Cooperatives Act or under the, 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 the uh, trust or any other legal entity that is acceptable within South Africa, we will look at those businesses. We will need it to be registered. So we will not fund sole proprietorships or partnerships. We'd want you to be able to register under CIPC. So uh, that's, that's, that's that. Have I missed out the question, Nondaba? Are you still with me, Nandaba? Okay, uh, maybe Nandaba. I'm not sure. Is anyone hearing me? Yes. Yeah, what's <laughs> Okay, <laughs> thank you. So maybe uh, maybe I can take another uh, couple of questions. Let's say uh, I take five more questions before we conclude. Morning, uh, Mr. Matonzela. Thanks a lot uh, for the presentation. But I want to know, do you look at ITC for both company and the personal issues about the ITC if you apply that? All right, thank you. Is there another question? Yes, yeah, my name Okay, uh, one at a time. Hello. No, Mazizi, yes, you can go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, my apologies for coming late. Uh, I had a network problem. I don't know whether what I'm going to ask uh, has been asked before. I just want to check if you do fund uh, 